In the last lecture, we went through some of the important concepts related to futures. Hopefully, we have convinced ourselves that the best way to think about asynchronous behavior is to think in terms of submitting a task for execution rather than creating a new thread. In this lecture, let's go ahead and look at some concrete examples. On the right, you see a method called do simple task, which returns void and does not take any input, nor does it throw any checked exceptions. So this is a prime candidate for a runnable interface. By the way, all it does is wait for five seconds and then terminates. On the left, you see the code which submits a task to an executor service. Notice the execution policy here. It's using a single thread executor, which means that all tasks submitted to it are run in a single thread, one after another, serially. The execution policy is basically determined by which concrete implementation of executor service you're using. So in this example, we are submitting a runnable and what's returned back is a future object. Using this future object, you can inquire on the state of the task or simply wait for the task to complete. But in our case, there is nothing to retrieve because no data is returned to the caller. That's why we have a question mark as the generic type of the future. It's unknown. Note here that the submit method returns immediately with a future. And you can do other operations as necessary. In the example, we go ahead and call the get method, which will wait till the simple task is completed. Successfully or not, does not matter. The get method will throw an exception if the do simple task throws a runtime exception, or if it is canceled, or if it is interrupted. This is standard stuff. But this example is not very exciting because nothing is being returned to the caller. Let's take a look at another example where we have a method on the right which returns a record of type task result. So now we have something that the task can return to the caller, which is likely what the caller wants. The do task method simply waits for an arbitrary number of seconds and then returns the task result. Not at all important what it actually does, but notice that this method cannot be a runnable because it's returning something. However, it's a prime candidate for using as a callable interface. On the left, we create a new fixed thread pool, executor service, and we wrap it in a try with resources block. Then we submit a callable to the executor service, which will return a future with the generic type task result. That's the result returned by the do task method. The execution policy here is that no more than three tasks can be executed by the service. So if you submit more than three tasks, the remaining tasks will be queued up till a thread is free for execution. So in the example, we then go ahead and call the get method on the future object, which will return the task result if successful. And then we simply print the result. In reality, you may go ahead and do any action on this result. In this example, we are also catching exceptions. If there are any runtime exceptions that were thrown from the do task method, those will be available to the caller in the form of execution exception. The get method can also throw a canceled exception, but we allow that to filter up the chain. But this is still not very exciting. Let's see what happens when multiple tasks are submitted to the service. Here you see it's the same executor service with maximum of three threads. We are now submitting three tasks, task one, task two, and task three. Within the try catch block, we are collecting all the results from the execution. Now this is interesting. All three tasks are running in parallel, which is great. But notice how we are retrieving the results. We are using the get method 
which blocks. The results from task two and task three will be available earlier than task one because they complete in one second and two seconds respectively, whereas task one completes in three seconds. But our design does not allow this to be processed until task one is completed because it's blocking on the get call on the task one future. Also note that if the task three throws an exception, then our calling thread cannot respond to it immediately because it is still waiting on the task one future dot get. So even though we are able to execute the tasks in parallel quite efficiently, we are unable to process the results efficiently. This is one problem with the future. In order to solve the problem of inefficient handling of the return results, we will use a class called Executor Completion Service, which acts like a decorator on any executor service. As the name implies, it can handle completion of the task much more efficiently. So here in the example, we have two callables right over here. We submit these to the execution completion service as seen. After submission, we go into a for loop two times. Two times because there are two tasks. And then we call the take method of the service. What does the take method do? Whenever a result is available from any of the submitted tasks, the take method will return with the associated future. So here in our example, the take method will return first for task two after one second. After that, it will return again for task one. Now with this approach, the caller can handle the results of the tasks as they come in. The code will just need to compare with the future to see which task result is available. After all the data is returned, the loop will exit. But how does the executor completion service work? The executor completion service uses another class called future task to do its job. So why don't we just use the future task directly? Let's see how to do that. Here's a very small snippet of the future task class. It implements the runnable future interface, which itself implements the runnable and the future interfaces. The most significant thing here is that we can override the done method to handle any result whenever the task is completed or canceled. Now this gives us a way to dynamically handle the results, whether success or failure does not matter. Here's an example of using future task. You may never have to use this class, but I'm including this for completeness sake. On the right side, we create a class, our future task, which extends from future task and overrides the done method. All this implementation done is prints the result, but in practice, you might actually do some real action. How do we use this class called our future task? We simply instantiate it once for task one and once for task two. And we will send the callable to the constructor. We then submit these two tasks to an executor service, which is now a cached thread pool, a completely different policy now. That's all that is needed here because the completion of these tasks will now be handled within the our future task class itself. However, in the code, you see that we go ahead and call the get methods, which is strictly not necessary because the done method of our future task will take care of handling the result anyway. Also note that the try with resources will make sure that both the tasks are completed before exiting the entire block. Just as a matter of curiosity, guess what the executor completion service does under the hoods. It wraps the callable with an implementation of future task as we are doing and submits to the executor service it is decorating. Now this implementation of future task overrides the done method just like we do, but 
it adds the future to a Java queue. That's where the take method comes from. The take method of the completion service simply delegates to the Java queue for processing. As you might recall, that the take method on the Java queue waits till somebody else adds data to it. You can look up the Java docs for the executor completion service for more details, or better still, take a look at the code itself. Note that in all of the examples, we use the try with resources block, which will automatically close the executor service, and that will make sure that all threads are safely terminated. Now with this, we conclude our overview of Java futures. Let's move on to more interesting stuff.